some new power tools to use in the workshop. This video shows me testing the Proxon tools on the workbench, if I can get the parts out of the box that is. This is the variable speed power supply. This is the largest of the two power supplies of sort out GD tools, and this one has a capacity of 5 amps. What I particularly like are all the holes in the top of it. These holes are not ventilation holes, they are tool holders. As in the last video, when I plugged in the charger, you will notice that I'm plugging the power supply into the socket with the main switch on. I really do like to live life on the edge. This is the low voltage electrical connector that plugs into the front of the unit. And it has three pins, unequally spaced, so you can only ever get it in the right way round. This power supply has a speed controller and so does the drill. And when I first plugged it in, with the drill controller on full and the power supply on minimum, the drill slowly rotated, very jerkily, but it was fine once I turned the power up on the power supply. Here are the power tools side by side, the one on the left is connected to the power supply, the one on the right is battery powered. So I have one fitted with a collet chuck and one fitted with a drill chuck. The speed controller goes up to 15,000 RPM on the wired drill and the speed control on the battery drill goes up to 20,000 RPM. This is a nice touch, the power supply has a holder to hold the drill when you're not using it. In this clip I'm fitting the flexible drive attachment into the drill chuck. This flexible drive really is extremely good. By way of a test, in this clip you can see that you can really coil up the flexible drive, but it doesn't bind. This is just for a test, I wouldn't dream of using the flexible drive coiled up so tightly. And the next item out of the box is this. It's a clamp assembly so you can hold the drill in position on the bench, therefore leaving both hands free to hold the part that you're working on. The design is very well thought out. It's a ball joint and it can be locked in any position. And it's very simple to operate using the Allen key that's provided. All you have to do is clamp the drill in position in the holder. You then have the option of using it freestanding, clamping the unit to the bench or even screwing it to the bench. In this test I'm using a drum sander to just clean up the end of a screwdriver. And when you've finished using this adapter, just undo the Allen bolt and remove the drill. I've wanted one of these, a very small drill press, for a long time. This is a very useful thing to have on the bench, and I can immediately think of lots of applications for this in my workshop. Not necessarily for drilling a piece of 2x1, which it does with ease. This drill isn't as noisy as you can hear in the clip. It's because the entire assembly is sat on my soundboard, which amplifies the noise. I use this soundboard to run steam engines on, it helps me to tell where the noise is coming from from a rattly steam engine. In this clip I'm drilling a piece of mahogany and this 1 8 drill bit goes through the mahogany with ease. A good feature of this drill press is the adjustable guide which will really help when it comes to drilling holes in a line. As a test I roughly marked out a piece of brass. Then I used this short spotting drill in the chuck to make small conical depressions in the top of the brass. I could drill all the way through or they could just act as guides for a much larger drill bit in my main drilling machine. As with all the Proxon products that I've seen, the drill press is really well made. The only problem with the collets that you get with these tools is they will not hold really tiny drills like this, so I've fitted one of the drill chucks that I bought to the faster battery powered drill. Now to give the machine some real work. One of the reasons that I bought this Proxon equipment was to do jobs like this. This is a coupling rod from a Hall class locomotive. It's a 5 inch gauge Hall class locomotive that I'm converting into a Hogwarts castle. Because as we all know in the Harry Potter films, the Hogwarts Express or the Hogwarts Castle was really Alton Hall, a great western engine just painted red. The coupling rods on this engine are not what I would term beautifully machined. So I'm improving the finish on these parts using a variety of tooling in the flexible drive connected to the Proxon power tool. Apart from the rust on these rods, some of the machining leaves a bit to be desired. And in this clip, I'm using a drum sander in the flexible drive to reprofile the end of the connecting rod. So what do I think about Proxon tools? I think they really are excellent. So it's 10 out of 10 for the excellence and quality of manufacture, 
and 10 out of 10 to RDG Tools for taking the time and trouble to let me look closely at what I was buying before I bought them. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.